Hey guys, welcome back to the build. So I have taken the liberty of wiring in these uh, the S bus and the video rail completely now. Um, there is the S uh, the cable for the XSR, um, and we have the on the top rail here the ground, the power, the S bus, and the smart port telemetry. And this goes off to um, TX1, which is on the right side here. You can just see that um, on the other side of this huge. Uh, uh, ground side of the main power cable um, and then down here this is probably a little trickier to see on camera but what I've done um, again as I have discussed in the previous video we have the connector here for the TBS Unified Pro um, and then what we have here is the video the smart audio which is the white cable you can see running off down here and that is going to um, I believe that is uh, TX3 on that side uh, and then on the power side you've got the uh, plus and minus which is going to the RAM pin um, which is uh, the RAM pin and the A ground which is giving us VBAT voltage uh, filtered VBAT voltage um, also wired to that same uh, RAM pin and VBAT voltage I've got uh, two sets of wires in each of those pin is the cable here for the Foxeer Monster V2 uh, and you can see just coming off of that, that's the OSD uh, extension. I've got to find somewhere for that to poke out so I can plug in and change the OSD easily. Uh, I've also wired in the buzzer plus and minus here. That's going around the back and then that's down here. I have yet to find a uh, find whereabout I'm going to attach that and secure it. But that all it may just get ripped tied to the the side at the front here. But yeah, I'm going to uh, be doing something with that. And then on top of this, which probably makes this look a little more bulbous than it actually is from here, um, this solder joint. I have come off and extended um, because I always like to run a cap on my build. It's something I've always done and will continue to do for the foreseeable future. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't fit a thousand microfarad. It's a bit too big on this build. Um, so I've had to go for a 470 uh, in capacitance and uh, 35 volts high temperature um, uh, capacitor, radial capacitor. So um, what I've done, because I've had to extend it away, there, there's just no room to have it poking out the back or under the flight stack. Um, so if you do ever extend a capacitor away, like this, use some decent thick cable um, to keep that ESR nice and low and plenty of solder when you're joining it in. Uh, that will really help with keeping the ESR low. Um, if you're just using the standard legs and hoping to run them off and bend them up here, uh, I'm telling you now that, that ESR will start climbing, it just won't do a good job. Um, if you have to extend out the back and use the standard legs, the other thing you could do, I suppose, is just to build a bit of solder up on those legs uh, and try and um, just increase the conductivity. Um, the other thing I've wired in as well here, which is, uh, let me just try and bring this into view, if I get these connect cables out of the way, is I've also got off one of the ESC wires, I've got, um, so the main rail voltage, I've got coming to this chroma control unit. Um, so that will, again, well within tolerance in terms of uh, power input voltage. And then I have wired that up so that we have, um, all four of these uh, data connections are going off of the same, exactly the same uh, solder pad. So um, each one of the each one of these four ESC arms, they're all going to behave the same, which is the way I want it. I want them all to be uh, probably go with like a radiating pattern, but I want all four of them to radiate out outwards in the same pattern that's why I've decided to do that. One of the things that's a little bit annoying about this is that most of the time when you mount things like this to somewhere on your quad you're usually mounting the flat surface of it and obviously um, this huge great regulator up here in a big lump makes it really quite uh, tricky to find somewhere to mount it. Um, you really want to be sticking down this surface but unfortunately as you can see look the push button for selecting your program on this board is on the flat side, super annoying. It would have been great if they could have actually moved that through to the other side so that you could use the flat surface for mounting. But unfortunately we can't do much about that. It's also kind of ruled out the possibility of me um, mounting the top plate, which was what I was originally going to do. I was gonna put that carbon plate on top and then mount on top of that, but it was just making the stack too high. So what I'm actually going to do um, is use some, uh, some sticky, tape or some pad rather and I'm actually going to have this guy mounted um, just on top the flight controller to the left here so that I can still get access to the button and it still be low profile enough that it won't get in the way of the components going on the roof of the stack. 
So there's the uh, TBS Unify Pro Race. So that's going in the roof. The pigtail has worked out just perfectly in terms of length with it all this way round, and it sits up nice and flush in this uh, in this recess in the roof, which is great. And then if I tilt it that way, you can see there'll be the uh, Unify will go there, and then directly uh, above it will be the XSR um, sitting right at the top there. So I'll have the two plugs coming out the front and then those will be uh, those will be secured in there. One of the things that Foxeer have that's kind of unique to them is their mounting system um, and unfortunately, let me see if I can find a normal camera, All right, I've got a, something like a run cam, or, oh, I've got another old Foxeer. So this is the kind of style that most of us are used to with our Swifts and HS1177 plastic cased uh, cameras, you usually have this kind of design and most frames out there accommodate very well for um, this kind of design and more importantly this um, measurement here, so the distance between these two surfaces and a lot of these side plate frame designs uh, will accommodate for that and for these uh, this, this kind of little uh, mounting point for the screws. Now you can probably already eyeball the problem I'm going to have here um, which is that this Fox here has more proud sections than we need uh, as well as the, the center section being proud it's also extended here and here. Now one thing that was incorporated into the design of this, I don't know if you can see, at the time this was uh, all put together in design, uh, Sharon did actually uh, make cutouts to accommodate for the Foxeer camera but it was the V2 camera which had a similar kind of thing to this. In fact I might have something that has that perhaps I think it was more like this this is a even though this is a a run cam uh, night eagle it was similar to something like that I believe um, but the Foxeer V2 cameras this would also accommodate for which is what this cutout was for um, which was really good of him to do that anyway to, to actually be able to use the Swift cameras the standard HS 11.7s and then the Foxeer and you know that's what it was at the time unfortunately um, it won't accommodate something where it's this tall so there's the result of me grinding off with a needle file those extra lugs. We've just got the middle one that we want. Um, yeah, not quite as pretty now, but it's done the job. And we just have the side lugs now prevailing, which is all that we want to be able to fit into pretty much any frame and certainly into this uh, Beast SX. So let's crack on. <laughs> Okay, so we're pretty much there now. We've got the Chroma mounted on top of the flight controller and uh, I've tucked a little bit of extra wire for the back um, wires to the LEDs underneath the board for the same reason when I need to flip this up and service it. Um, if these were just cut to length I'd be stuffed and all that hard work with the ESC wires would have gone to waste. That is what the roof pod now looks like. We have the um, Foxeer camera all nicely mounted in after making that little modification with the grinding of the edges on the uh, the mount. And then as I said you can just see the XSR and the uh, VTX up in the top there. So that is pretty much all ready to go straight on top of there and connect up. Finally the last bit we did if I flip that over was just to wire in the LEDs. Uh, and then the heat shrink will go over those once they're done. motors are on the heat shrink is down and if we flip it over you can see all the LEDs are under the shrink and all the wiring is nice and neat 
So I'm pretty happy with it so far. Um, I'm going to do a quick power on test. I've already checked for continuity and everything is good on that front. Always make sure you do that. So I think we're about there now. Um, the only other few things that I've done here, I've added a little bit of hot glue on top of the S bus connection. And that is because the wire that came with the XSR is still, unfortunately, that plastic insulation. And when that rocks back and forwards, I just find it's really good at uh, pulling solder joints loose. Um, so unlike the silicone wire, which I much prefer on absolutely everything else. Um, at some point I'll replace that, but for now the uh, easy solution is just to make sure those joints don't waggle. So I've just put a little bit of hot glue down on top of that. Uh, everything's mounted up the way um, that I wanted it. We've got the XSR, which is now wired. That's gonna go in underneath the uh, the Unify Pro Race. Uh, the race is also wired in, Smart Audio is wired in. Um, telemetry is wired in via S port um, and the camera is plugged in as well um, so yeah it's pretty much all ready to go in and then I just need to do a little bit of tidying with some of this wire and then uh, we're pretty much done we can have a look at some of the detailing that I've done as well so there we go guys, all done, and I've got to say I'm pretty happy with the results. You'll notice there's a bit of detailing that I added as well. I've uh, painted up the uh, the canopy here and put a gloss coat on. If you're interested in the techniques that I use to get a nice uh, shiny gloss finish, um, I did do a video on how I custom paint my Tyrannus, um, and all the techniques that I used in that are exactly the same when it came to doing this. I haven't actually f secured this down because um, that gloss coat is still hardening up and I'll be uh, waiting at least 24 hours before I put any screw pressure onto the side of it. You'll also notice that I uh, <clears throat> let my OCD get control and uh, painted the capacitor, which was a bit of an eyesore stuck on the side there otherwise, so no, it doesn't look so bad. Um, what else can I say? So in terms of how low profile the whole thing came out, well, despite the board being low profile, the biggest problem really was the fact that I had to squeeze in the LED chroma control board. Now, I know I could have gone with the Betaflight um, standard LED control system, and there is some good um, effects like the Larson scanner, etc. Um, but the ones that have been programmed into this chrome, uh, this chroma kit are absolutely fantastic, and I'll show you those patterns in just a second. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's all worked out really well. The Monster V2 is all programmed up and working absolutely fine, as well as the Betaflight OSD. Smart Audio is working a treat, so I can now switch the power and channel via the Betaflight OSD, which is uh, great, as well as the PIDs and other useful things like that. So yeah, all in all, I'm really happy with the way that has turned out. And maybe we should have a quick look at it next to its uh, brother, the Beast X. So there's the two of them together and you can see the slight difference in uh, geometry with these arms a little further forward and closer together. But yeah, there's a look at the two of them side by side. And with that flipped over, you can see how those LEDs look underneath, uh, under the heat shrink and the wiring I've tucked uh, partly in the heat shrink and then up and over so you really don't get any wiring in the way of the battery. So let's plug her in and just have a look at this lighting. <laughs> 